Hello and welcome to the MHG podcast. Once again, I'm Bradley. And joining me this week, we had to pay out quite a lot of money to get him there because a certain tech company tried to buy him. But we went, no, no. Look, you may have $68 billion in the bank. I've been lying all these years. I've got 75, so I will secure these services. It's Stu. How are you doing, Stu? Oh, yeah. I am definitely worth that amount of money to anybody. So if anyone's interested, yeah. I'll do anything for 65 billion. In fact, I'd probably do most things for 65p, so, you know, cheap. There's with or without sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Whatever. Uh, nothing's off the table, you know. Yeah. I hate capitalist culture, but I'll take the money, please. Yeah. Because that's the life you've created. What do you think about the Activision buyout from Microsoft? Oh, so many thoughts. So many thoughts. It's really weird. I it's mean, it's not. Yeah, mostly you'd either go, ah, oh, this is bad for the industry or something like that, the monopolisation. But then you go, but if it gets rid of the sex creeps, then good. Yeah, I mean, but, hmm. on an, yeah, on an individual company level, it, it's got to be, I think, good. Because I don't think Microsoft have got into the habit of, in recent years, of pulling the internal companies apart once they buy them. Mm. I think they've sort of kept them fairly well structured. I mean, long gone, I think, are the days like what they did with Rare, um, thankfully. But they still might pull them apart because they've got so many now. But, you know, all of that's a bit iffy. But it's it's one company. Before you say it's one company where you go actually do pull the studios apart because all the studios are working on Call of Duty. So making get them onto other projects that would be quite good. I think there's a lot of work they could put into it to make it good. Yeah, I think they could separate out the the you know the IP creators from you know good first person shooters and take them off Call of Duty and have a dedicated Call of Duty studio that you know still allows room for there to be new IP and, and new FPS experiences, because that has sucked all the talent up for years. Yeah. So, that yeah, there's that. But I think on the undeniably positive side, getting rid of that hideous, sexist, misogynistic corporate culture has got to be a good thing. You know, that's that can only be good. And Microsoft are very kind of operating in a very woke model now. So, yeah, yeah. that's that side of it is good. If it was anyone else I in charge of Microsoft's gaming division, I'd be like, oh, I don't know. What... But Phil Spencer seems to say all the right things and do many of the right things. And you said, with in terms of restructuring companies or just like gutting studios, they seem to have learned their lessons. I'm okay with, say, for example, EA, when they messed up Bullfrog. Obviously, it's, it's bad for them. But if they had turned around and went, oh, that was a mistake, we've learned from it. Or, you know, Activision learned from putting everyone onto Call of Duty first time round and went, actually, we'll stop doing that. I'd be okay with those original mistakes. It's when they keep doing it. Like Ubisoft keeps making these same mistakes, you know, and they're still covering, rather than holding their hands up and going, look, we, we shouldn't be protecting these the, these people at the top. Well, we are going to improve it now. You, you cannot, you're not okay with it, but you can kind of go, at least you're trying. And Microsoft seems to be in that position where they've looked at the past and gone, what have we done right? What have we done wrong? Okay, this is the direction we'll go in. Uh, whether it will work out long term, I don't know. But it, 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 I, I'm erring on the with cautious positiveness at the moment. I think. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, it's a, it's such a weird one. I, it's really going to have to be a wait and see. Definitely. I think if you're just talking purely about the games, I would be quite excited to feel like I could buy them again. Yeah. Um, I would like there to be. Uh, an access to the the previous titles in in that collection um, that just hasn't been accessible and has been too expensive and also you don't want to give money to Activision etc. You know, so we yeah. could have the ultimate crossover of first person shooters. We could have Master Chief versus Doom Guy versus generic Call of Duty soldier. <laughs> yeah, well, I could live with that being done in a kind of jokey way, you know, in a. Or a yeah, you know, Smash Brothers kind Smash of Smash Brothers, super, super shoot masters. Yeah, there you go. And it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could do. I could live with a, like a Namco X Capcom type, you know, thing or Car Fighters Clash or whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think there's some good stuff that could happen, but it's a definitely a wait and see. 
Yes. Yeah, definitely. It's June that this apparently is meant to be completed, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be a long time before it all sort of... We really feel the impact of it, I think. Yeah. So, but uh, okay, one question, one question only, then we'll get on to talking about actual, uh, actual like, stuff we've been playing. Call of Duty, does it go exclusive eventually? That's an excellent question. So, I reckon... Because everyone's sort of asking this question. It's the first question that comes to mind. That's why I'm asking it. I'm not trying to be different. No, I know. (laughs) But no, it's a great question. It's a really funny one. I bet you right now this question is being thought about and argued about. Because what it will be is there'll be the money men who are like, you know, if if we make it exclusive, we've trapped people. We've got them. You know, and then there'll be the the other money men who are like, but if we license it out, we're making tons of revenue there, and they'll have to present arguments of which one will pay off most over time. And I think the one that will win is to not have exclusivity personally, because I think that they they will realise their revenue stream will be bigger and better if they still license it out, but. Timed exclusivity might well be a thing, you know? So. Possibly. See, my theory on this is if it was any, if it was Sony or Nintendo, I think it would become exclusive instantly. Microsoft, again, have got a track record of wanting their IP that they've bought to still be on other platforms. The, not Skyrim, what's the, their new major IP, Bethesda's one, whatever that, whatever that was. Um, it's not, bizarrely, a big enough franchise in terms of common like uh popular um like pop culture or anything like that it, it gets a thing out now and again and there's staff starfield is that the new one possibly yes i think it it's is, a brand it? new it's a brand new ip uh, that one and yeah you could go exclusive with that minecraft they've never even hinted at exclusivity and i think call of duty in the pop culture mindset is is that damn big it won't go exclusive it's, it's there's just no way it will go exclusive in, in, in my opinion and i say microsoft have got track records for putting stuff out on other systems the only time really sony have done it apart from their pc thing now is when they i want to say almost accidentally put out mlb the show onto xbox that was just the i still can't work out how that happened why that happened so sony santa monica made it it's sony owned but it ended up on Xbox. I still can't get my head around it. Yeah, yeah no, no, great points, great points. And I think you're right. I think I, I think exclusivity would be a bit of a dead end. And I think that one of the major things is that, that you know, will lead them to that decision is that the audience is extremely fickle about multiplayer games. They're not really in it for the IP. You know, they're in it for the experience. And if people come along and go, oh, you know, Overwatch, oh, that gives you this experience, you know, over you know, whatever, PUBG, whatever, then yeah. they'll just switch. People have got no kind of problem about flipping over to a different IP as long as it's available on their system. So, yeah, they'll go, well, well Call of Duty will be left by the wayside if we make it, you know, if we make it exclusive. So, yeah. And the more people that get to play it, the more money it's going to make. It's, it, I'm sorry, it's just as simple as that. And more people should, the more people that can play it, the better it'll be and the longer it'll last. So, yeah, hopefully, you know, they'll, they'll do their numbers and everything and they'll go, actually, what's also just the good idea? What's going to make us look good? Uh, because at the end of the day, it's a business decision. Yes. They're not, they're not spending out $68 billion out of the kindness of their hearts are going look, Activision have been owned by shits so we're going to do a good thing and make sure they're not yeah I'd like to think maybe one, someday a big company would but it's a business decision yeah and also you, you hit on something there kindness of our hearts is is also a business decision you're right yes. so if you go oh you know out of the kindness of our hearts you're still going to be able to play this on PS5 that's really good marketing yeah and people will go ah oh, that's good guys and then when the next generation of consoles comes around, people go, oh, oh, let's go Microsoft. Let's buy the next Xbox because, you know, they're doing really good things. Yeah. Whereas I, I'm, I'm Xbox rather than PlayStation mode because Game Pass. And I don't even need an Xbox for it. So, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But just, anyway. just, to, just to cap that off, 
I do think that there'll still be a lot of internal arguments about that because I think that you can make a really good business case. Not that I would go with it, but you can make a good business case for it being exclusive yeah. in terms of saying, but we've sewn up the market and our plan is to sew up the market. So I think the arguments yeah. will go on for that right up until June. Or I'm hoping that will happen before they spend out $68 billion. Well, you would like to think that, but... <laughs> I mean, I've got ADHD. I, I would just go out and spend it. But I'm hoping Microsoft has other people who go, whoa, Phil, what do you mean? You've just spent $68 billion on a video game company. And they've got what in charge? <laughs> yeah, I'd hope that was all discussed before they spend out. But hey, who knows? $68 billion to a company like Microsoft. It's a drop in the ocean. But anyway, enough of the future. <laughs> Let's talk present and probably past. Let's talk games. I'll let you kick off this time, Stu. Yeah, so straight back to the past for my first game, and actually for my second one, although not as far back. So I can't remember if I mentioned it last week, but I picked up a Mega Drive 2 cheap off eBay uh, because it was. Ooh. It said, oh, you know, it's it's got intermittent power, you know, it doesn't work properly, and that put a lot of people off, and I was like, ah, I'll fix that. So I got that for nine quid, and sure enough, it was an incredibly easy fix, and then I... 60 hertz modded it because I can do that and suddenly you know a nine pound non-working console becomes a, a multi-region multi-hertz you know monster for a few quid so that was nice and I already have all the gubbins because I uh, you know when I do repairs on them I need the cables so I always have the cables so I also have test games and one of the test games I have is Streets of Rage 2 yes and so I played that through. I played it through to completion. And whilst I was playing it through, I realised I've never played it through to completion. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, um, it's really good. Uh, it's a funny one. So obviously it's been so utterly superseded by Streets of Rage 4 that it's not even funny. But it doesn't stop it being a good game. It still looks good. I, I love the cartoony effect they've gone for. They they really played around well with what the Mega Drive can do, even though it was a comparatively early game in the Mega Drive's life. But the funny thing is, just just a, a little sidebar, like when we were talking about, you know, when we were doing our Sega special, we completely forgot to, I completely forgot to mention Streets of Rage at all, which for which I do apologise. But also, you know, it was a competitor to, like, you know, Final Fight and stuff. And you talk about, like, the early days of the Mega Drive, but it was around for such a short time compared to how con how long consoles are around today that, you know, a year later in its life cycle was a really long time. And this was only a, a year or two after Streets of Rage 1, but it looks like a different generation almost, you know. Yeah. And they've made really great use of the really limited palette on Mega Drive and, you know, great scrolling effects and the size of the sprites is pretty good. It could be better. There are games out there on the Mega Drive that push it even further. But, it, you know, it's it's pretty good. And it has, you know, special moves that are what you'd expect in a modern fighting uh, game, a brawler, you know, a scrolling beat-em-up. So, yeah, it's good. It's not brilliant. It, I mean... It ha I don't know how much people who who kind of go on about it these days are just going off nostalgia, and, and I'm I'm not nostalgic. I play a game, I judge it on what's in front of myself, and yeah, you know, it's a good beam up. But if you think about it, just a year or two later, and even stuff around the same time that was coming out from Capcom was just much much better. And okay, they they had the power of the the arcade behind them, but even like their ports to the SNES which wasn't as good at doing scrolling beat-em-ups because of its slower CPU and had more sort of slowdown. Even then, stuff like Captain Commando, Knights of the Round, Magic Sword, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if they're better games. They didn't get much publicity in the West. Like, I'm really going off on a tangent here. I'm so sorry. No, but, it's... <laughs> but just to finish off, you know, even going by the games of the time... I think it, it gets there and is kind of in a kind of in-studio, for-the-home kind of a beat-em-up. But you put when you're putting it up against like the arcades and the arcade ports at that time, you know, not just Final Fight, but like I said, Knights of the Round. And, you know, later on you've got Alien vs. Predator, which is just phenomenal. It doesn't quite get there for me, but it's still a good game. 
yeah, no, I, I, I get 100% what you're saying. I, I mean, ironically enough, uh, without speaking to you about it, I actually played a little bit of Streets of Rage 2 last week when I was testing out some um, emulation stuff. Ah. And I, I still really like it. It's still... You're right in, I think it's been bettered almost in every way like over the years, even sort of like not long after it came out. And it is with some sort of like most tinted specs on. Uh, uh, just I remember mean, it was such a f- game I was fond of at the time. Um, I think I had it on a compilation cartridge, probably. I can't remember. Um, I might have had it separate. Um, but it was, um, again, because I couldn't buy loads and loads of stuff. It's like I, I played through it many times over. And I went back. And to be honest, it still gave me that same kick it's playable what i like about streets of rage 2 is i think if you've never played a beat em up it's playable yeah yeah um and okay it's been better the games have offered more complex systems um streets of rage 4 i i like but i'm still struggle to get into i struggle to pick that up and just play oh. now i've not played streets of rage 2 properly for 20 years nearly i want to say and yeah, I could just go straight back into it. There's a simplicity I liked about it. But I get what you're saying, because you go categorically look at anything else that came on, most stuff that came out afterwards, and it has been bettered by so many different things. Yeah. Well, like, as I say, I, I think it was it was kind of bettered by stuff at the time as well. But, no, I, I might well be on my own with that one. It's very, very well loved. I think the one thing that knocked it down a little bit for me was um, the boss fights, because they were kind of like, you know, the equivalent of bullet sponges, <laughs> punch sponges. Yeah. And also some of them were really frustrating. Like there's this flying one. Um, one of his variants is called Jet. And he's just rubbish and really, really poor boss. And there's a couple that are kind of like, huh, really? Yeah. <laughs> this is just an annoyance to, for me to get onto the next part, really. Um, and yeah, that kind of knocked it down a, a couple of pegs for me but yeah it is still very good i would never put it up there in the pantheon personally i'd give it like a special mention but yeah you know it's it's fine and one of the things i do like is it really does make a lot of good use of the mega drives capabilities which is nice to see yeah yeah and if you're struggling with some of the uh some of the sponge bosses the big bosses uh save states on modern emulation are wonderful <laughs> yeah <laughs> I love save states. When we do our big, yeah. you know, our big talk about emulation, whenever that is, we'll uh, we'll definitely be praising save states that are afters. Yeah, oh, definitely. So, moving on, for me, I've got I've got three that I've got to talk about. One's just going to be just such a a real quick one because it's one I got um, probably back in November now. But I'm going to talk about Word Forward which is a word-based puzzle game. I could have started, actually, I should, probably should have started that with, I've been playing a word puzzle game. Uh, you could have gone, oh, you've been playing Word. And I could have gone, no, I've not been playing Word. But anyway, <laughs> I've been playing, Jesus Christ. I've been playing Word Forward. And it's basically, you can almost get like this boggle-style layout. And the idea is you've got to find words in, 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 the, bo- in the boggle layout, um, in the grid, and clear the letters, all the letters in each level. Um, and you get different power-ups and stuff like that. So you can't just go, oh, I see the word day. Let's clear that because that might stop you getting another word further down in the puzzle. So you've got to almost... It was described. I mean, the way it was described, I was a bit... Uh, maybe not. It's, it was described as um, a word game with a chess-like strategy to it. And that's exactly what it is because you really do. There's so many words you look at straight away. You go, oh, that's there. Get that, that, that. And you, you get it. You go, oh... I can only clear half the the board. So you do have to look ahead and go, right, if I clear this, what effect that's going to have. So like like you do in chess, where you've got to go, if I do move this knight here, and it's there to be taken, but what does it expose elsewhere and stuff? You've really got to have that thinking forward. And what you get, it's not just clearing the letters on. You can swap letters out. You can do almost like a randomizer and stuff like that. So there's loads of little extra bits like power-ups you can get to help you. It's not bad, what I would prefer this to have been, rather than having sort of like, I think it's like 50 odd, maybe uh, maybe more than that. Actually, it's a good couple of hundred levels, I suppose. Uh, rather than having a couple of hundred levels, it's almost like the sort of thing I'd like to see them do a daily puzzle of, and that's it. Right, yeah. Rather than this whole, 
this whole package. So again, I suppose almost like what Wordle's doing, or have or have less puzzles because it just gets. Like, I got bored in the end trying to complete all the puzzles. It's just too many in a way, and then just go here's your daily. Um, you see the. Um, like the Sudoku games that you get on used to get on iOS and Android used to be is a base pack, but you could also get a free daily puzzle. This is what this needs, but it's, it's it's competent. I played it on the Switch. Needs a dark mode option, like most feeds. It's a white bright background with light text makes it very difficult for me to see. But I concentrate what I'm doing. So it needs a dark option. Um, it's not difficult. The Sudoku games on from Goya on Steam they do it. They do a dark option. There's no reason a game like that looks this simple. Can't just have a just change the colours option. It what it does, it does well. That's about it, really. It's it's not bad. Right, yeah. No, that's that's interesting. Uh I, I like it when there's this kind of you know innovation and hopefully someone will come along and, and perfect it. But really good point about the daily thing. So you mentioned it about a game but I can't remember which a couple of weeks back and said you know having a daily mode is brilliant for just bringing you in and we also talked about it with you know with Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon as well yeah it's a great way of just engaging you and they do it with Tetris Effect Connected and stuff and that's more and more becoming a thing and I, I, I guess some of that does really drift in from the mobile gaming market which you know has so many players who just jump in for 10 minutes once a day absolutely brilliant idea and yeah i think that you're probably going to see that come in this game down the line not far you know not far down the line if it does well so yeah that does sound interesting but i i think you know it behooves us now to talk about wordle i think we have to discuss wordle because that's a phenomenon and i i I play it every day and i didn't even think of mentioning it because it's kind of embedded so much in my mind now (laughs) it is it is just a uh, what what's perfect it's we speak quite often about coffee cup or, or you know coffee cup games, which is they cost the price of a cup of coffee and can last you for a cup of coffee. Obviously, Wordle's free. Uh, just as a public service announcement, if you try and find an app for Wordle, it's not available as an app. They're all clones. If you're made to pay for Wordle, it's not Wordle. The developer of it, it's a browser-based game that's only browser based and it's 100 free one puzzle a day that's it yeah i would like four and six letter options as well though but again it's what he's made he's happy fine do you know what i'm fine with that if someone did want to make a, a four and six letter version of it to go along and not charge so it's not trying to profit off what he did i'm fine but yeah wordle's amazing it is and five is is a really great balance um they've they, he's done a really clever thing there because yeah you know the number of vowels versus consonants that you can use to get a, a guess in is perfect in five you know with four it could be way too easy and with well ironically with six it could be because the number of vowels you can chuck at it at the beginning and get a really good idea of what it is would probably be... You'd have to add something else, I think, to the formula if you were going to go with either a larger or a smaller number of letters. So that in itself is brilliant. And it's just that simplicity of colouring the letter for whether you've got it right or whether you've got it but it's in the wrong place is just fantastic. Yeah. It, you know, And it doesn't make it... <laughs> it does make it a little easier, but it's still blooming hard. Like, to the other day... One of the an- the answer was proxy, and it took me forever to get to it. it. I only just got it, you know, on the six, you know, six option, um, and so because some of them are really fiendish like that. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just a it's just a great game. Apparently, he's yeah. got two thousand of them. Yeah, I don't know how long it's been running so far, but well, we're on day I think two hundred and something. So mm. he's you know. It's been around. Okay, I, mean, I love stories like this. It's, it's not that he hasn't made it because he wants to make a game for everybody. He made it because he it's something for his I think for his partner or his wife, and um, and it just blew up from there. He, you know, he made it public domain, so it was there and just for her to play it and pick it up wherever she was. Brilliant idea, and then it just built from there. And I just absolutely loved that it was done. And what I you know couple of little bits that have come from this already and i stories i absolutely love so um there's a anyone who doesn't know there's a tv quiz show on itv called lingo which is basically wordle 
and the host of that is called, I think, Adil Ray is what he's called. And I think he does like uh, Good Morning Britain and stuff like that at times. And they was doing, apparently they was doing a segment uh, like to introduce like the Lorraine Kelly show for the next like hour or whatever it was. And she sort of picked up about this great game she's playing called Wordle. And you could kind of see in his face how he started looking really pissed off about it yeah. <laughs> because like that, there's no mention of lingo at all and it is just like that's his thing <laughs> but it's yeah that there's that there's integration with townscaper I, 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 I love how people's minds go to this so you can take your daily wordle guesses put them in a tweet take that tweet and then convert it to make buildings in townscaper oh wow that's so which clever. is brilliant it's really brilliant and the other one, um, so you've got the guy who was basically trying to profit off of the word off thing by doing his clone and charging for it. But there's another guy who made a game called Wordle a good number of years ago, and it was it didn't do anything. He's, he got a couple of thousand downloads, and it just didn't do anything. But in the last month or so, it's blown up, and he's like hundreds of thousands of downloads on this oh, game. Nice, um, and he's been making money. But instead of keeping the money, he basically says this isn't money that I'm due. He's given all the money to charity what? that's come from the game. And it's like, what a lovely story. Oh, wow. Cool, that's incredible. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's just it's one of those feel-good stories. Now, question is, if you're doing the Forum Game of the Year next year, does Word all count? Because technically, <laughs> it didn't come out in 2022. Yeah, everyone's going to want to put it in there. Oh, I know, God. So, yeah, for, for the benefit of anyone who doesn't know, I've been on a forum that both me and Brad frequent. I've been doing running the Game of the Year Awards for 2021. <laughs> oh, 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 getting that sorted out. Oh, gee whiz, that, that was fun. Oh, God. But, um, yeah, no, I don't know if it would or wouldn't. And I don't know if I did it again, I think I'd probably have some sort of breakdown because, yeah, <laughs> working out when things fit nightmare but, but i think so you just do our game of the year we don't care yeah, we don't give a monkeys. did you enjoy it yeah, <laughs> yeah good pretty much yeah did you play it this year yeah exactly, exactly. they'll have it yeah the, you know you know in the thing is i don't know what's going a bit tangent but you kind of know if someone's coming up and going ah oh, the original super mario world you kind of go you're taking the piss a bit but if it's something that was released within the last year or two or got a re-release and that's what you it counts have a bit of leeway i mean we have more leeway when we're voting for brexit or prime ministers let yeah but on the game of the year awards oh no rules is rules <laughs> yeah and the thing is as well if you if like like everybody let's just pick a, a game that was released last year at random you know let's say the ascent was going to win, yeah. you know? Most people voted for The Ascent, it's going to win. If people vote for, you know, Streets of Rage 2, uh, it's going to be one person. You know, if somebody votes yeah. for, you know, Skyward, Skyward Sword on the Wii, you know, that's going to be one person. Most people are going to yeah. vote for something that is within living memory kind of thing. Not the Switch version, I'll have you know. Yeah. So you, you don't really have to panic that someone's going to start eating your lunch, you know. But does that mean Tetris could never be included ever again? <laughs> I th it depends on the uh, the person <laughs> running the actual poll. <laughs> that's the answer. I, I might run it next year. Yeah, go for it. Enjoy. I might run it next year, and they just make sure it's the the winner. It's just this most obscure game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you so. just have to say the game is not allowed on Game Pass and not allowed to cost more than five pounds, and then yeah, you'll absolutely hoover them. Up. It's not allowed to be a trick. Yeah, it's not. It's, it can't have had like more than five people working on it. There you go. That's, that's how you. That's I game of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maximum development pool of five people. Doing <laughs> yeah, it. doing it. But yeah, oh dear. Right, this was meant to be my quick one. Sorry. What, no, so it's good. Moving on for your, ne your next No, one. that was great because it, it was really good to introduce talking about Wordle because it... I also feel sorry for like when I said this off um, for like the coverage request. They're going to go, oh look, they're talking about our game. It's really good. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> Wordle. <laughs> <laughs> well, to turn it around a little bit, um, <laughs> word forward, I will check out because i've just had a look at videos and it looks good you uh, it's four quid on steam yeah. by the way you can get it on switch but it's four quid on steam yeah. so yeah no you you're absolutely right in that even just looking at it there 
it needs a dark mode because it goes oh this is similar to games you've played which is mini metro mini motorways which is arguably no it's not but <laughs> at the same time both of those games have a dark mode so from an accessibility point st- uh, standpoint it really needs that yeah but it, yeah. It, other than that yeah i think i'll pick it up and it's another one that I'm like, I'm not going to play that on Steam, on on my PC. It's never going to happen. So, you know, I have two options. One, pay more and get it on Switch, or wait for my Steam Deck to come out and play it on there for four quid. And I think I'll be taking that option. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I can't. We'll talk Steam Deck another day because that will drag on uh, because I think that's going to make some interesting knock-on effects. Yes, it will. Right. Yeah. Your next game, come up. So, <laughs> no, my next game is another old one, but nowhere near as old. It's Gran Turismo Sport. So, yeah, as I talked about last week, I sort of dusted off my PS4, got it working again. I uh, jailbroke it initially and was playing around with, you know, copying stuff to the hard drive and stuff as a technical exercise. Uh, anyway, I undid all of that and went back to it being an ordinary PS4 because I put Gran Turismo on. And because you need to link your account and play it always online, even if you're not um, paying for you know PS Plus or PS Now or any of that bull crap, um, you have to you know you have to be online to play most of the stuff. Yeah, you're only allowed into like a tiny little arcade mode that has like five tracks. So I was like, oh, oof, it's not going to be worth it just for one game. And then I played it for a few minutes. I was like, yeah, it's totally worth it for one game. And so I undid the jailbreak, went back to it being an ordinary PS4, did all the updates, got Gran Turismo Sport updated, and it's just amazing. So to put it in context, I really didn't get on with Forza Horizon. You know, it just didn't click with me at all. And I've played quite a few sort of, semi-sim, simcade type races and my favourite one of the last decade is probably Drive Club, I would say almost surely yeah. Drive Club especially if Dirt yeah. 2 falls out of the previous decade, I guess it does now and yeah that's a phenomenal game and Gran Turismo is, is more simmy than that but it's still not a sim that kind of arcade element seeps in no matter what you do. And so you go into Gran Turismo thinking, oh, yeah, no, this is the Sim series. And actually now, when there are so many Western-developed Sim races, you're like, oh, God, no, this is nothing like a Sim. You know, it's nowhere near as Simmy as, as it used to be. And to me, that can only be a good thing when it comes to a console racer. Yeah. And, yeah, it's it's just great and Oh God, is it good looking? And it runs at 60 frames per second, which I know is not that big a deal to you, but, you know, compared with Drive Club, which only ran at 30, it, it feels so much more responsive and, you know, easier to read the road and the corners. Ah, the graphics are, are just stunning. I, I can't believe they're getting that out of a console that's, what, how old now? Eight years? Nine years? You know, yeah. just, oh... And it handles so well, and there are so many accessibility options, so many drive options. It's just an amazing package of a game, and I got it for, you know, buttons. So, yeah, really a weird one to have sat on, although I sat on it because I think it was very bare bones on release, and we're like four or five years down the line from release now, yeah. and it's a totally different game, I understand. So, yeah, if you've, if you've been sitting on it like me, oh, get it, it's really good. See, the problem I've had with the last couple of Gran Turismo's, and I played some of Sport, and I don't know if they've managed to update this in, in, in the last couple of years or anything. They're wonderful driving games. Honestly, the driving in those games are wonderful. I, I, I do like them. I, I love doing them. But they need to get a user experience designer in. They, that, the user experience around Gran Turismo games is awful always has yeah. been and you're right when you talk about like it's it's a definitely a sim cage rather than a, an actual sim because i remember back on gran turismo 2 i think it was where you had your arcade disc and your simulation disc now all that actually meant was the simulation disc had a like a progression system to it it wasn't actually didn't change or at least in my mind didn't change anything to do with how the races went yeah. Um, so you know that's that's how the Japanese developers saw Sim was just oh, it was a story to it. There you go, that'll do. 
But yeah, no, Gradual Slow Sport, I, I, I've played it a few times. But the problem I've had with it is that it takes me so long to actually load up an actual race. I couldn't be bothered. Yeah, actually, that, that's a good point. The, the loading times are stupid. Really, really, really loads bad. Loads each yeah. menu and... Yeah. I'm sat there by the end of it going, I could have actually learned to drive and get my racing license in the time it's taken this second menu to load. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I could have gone on one of those, you know, gift coupon day things where you drive a sports car type thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, it is bananas how long it takes and it doesn't... It, yeah, yeah, no, that is a that is a detractor from it. Definitely, it's it's one of those games that's really not perfect. I would, you know, even though I really like it, I wouldn't say, oh god, you know, pay fifty quid for it on release. You know, I'm saying buy it now that it's cheap and you know yeah. it's it's really it's really great, but it does come with caveats, and I'm really hoping. That in March, if that's the actual date, the, the next Gran Turismo comes out on PS5. That what that's one of the things they fixed. You know that they use the speed of the the hard drive much much more effectively, so that it's uh, not quite so tortuous waiting for it to actually yeah. you know load up so you can actually play a game. And menus that make sense. And That'd menus be nice that make as well. sense. Yeah, but I don't know because they haven't, like you say, they've got no history of making any improvements with that. No. So, see, it reminds me of Gran Turismo. So, I, I, I once done. So, I was working for a guy who's a prick. He hasn't paid me. I was just out right. He owes me thousands, but I've got no. But he's got. He's, he's, he's got me under. Anyway, I don't need to go into detail about any of, of that side. He, I, he wanted me to build. He wanted to reinvent the internet, and he went. Oh, I need to build this system, this internet where you use mind mapping, like a three D mind map thing, to navigate through a website and stuff like that. I was like, why don't we just use menus? Like, no, we've got down menus and buttons. Like, everyone's like, no, no, this is going to be the future. This is going to be Web 3.0. I was like, but, but it's confusing. You don't need to do that. Yeah. You look like, you sound like you've, like, watched the late 90s, like, future internet film. And that's what it was. And it's like, that's not that's not how, how, how internet works. Simplicity is the key. No, 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 we'll do this. And you start off here and then you connect and you go along this line. And it's like, but but it it's shit. That's kind of how Gran Turismo. And you can have the best content behind this system that he had, that he had like really good content. And that's Gran Turismo because you've got crap menus and navigation to amazing content. No, there's, there's no arguing with that at all. It is poor. Um, I really want a PS4 again. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they, yeah. I mean, get a PS5 when you can, and then you, you're laughing really. But <laughs> PS5 when I can, know, it's yeah. like about twenty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten years down the line. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose when you're thinking about it, I, I understand why the menus are so complex, and also I understand because I got a load. I mean, you know, cheap is obviously my middle name, but I, I got cheap sims on the pc as you know because we talked about them a lot over the last couple of years yeah about picking them up in humble bundles and stuff for literally pennies and you know had a go with them and they suffer from the same problem and i think what they're trying to avoid is the problem that you have well i see it as a problem with the forza games of your menu is the game you know you're in the game and then everything that you do is menu you know, really, yeah. until you get to a race. So instead of quickly choosing it from a list and then being in that race, you're spending five minutes driving to a menu choice. Yeah. You know, and I hate that. And it, it ruined Forts of Horizon 5 for me. I mean, and the, the previous games, really. But yeah, no, that's I, I, there's a middle ground, definitely. But it is different. Burnout to find Paradise it. got that middle ground. I don't know. I, no, I wasn't a big fan of that layout either. You still had to drive to two things to start events, but you had so much to do in between that it really didn't bother me. The amount of times I used to go, oh, "I've got an event. Ah, oh, let's press both shoulder buttons and have a crash." Uh, that that was that was brilliant. I'm sorry, I really did like that. The most the worst thing was though when you was doing an event and failed an event, and then originally you had to drive all the way back to where you were and start again and then they patched in a restart button like a restart menu option that you could do via the d-pad and that where it is where it found its middle ground to a degree it could still be improved don't get me wrong 
But at least that's going, yeah, this is a bit obtuse. We'll try and do something to fix it a bit. I think that's moving it in the right direction. But I, I didn't I didn't take to that. But I mean, you know, that's personal I choice. still like, yeah, a, here's all what's available. Which one do you want to do? Okay, we'll load you into it. Yeah, I think that should always be there. I think you can leave yeah. in the traversal thing of you know it's a driving thing it's a you know a road user kind of experience you can leave that in if you want but it should be it should be optional i think you know yeah, yeah. but where okay this is really deep we're going off on some tangents today like rather than the original guys we're talking about fault to horizons issue is that you do have like the speed cameras and, and things you can find but they're so spaced out whereas what burnout paradise had every single road had a uh, a time trial to it and a crash zone to it that you could do and get a top score on. So doesn't matter where you were going, what you were doing, there was something you could be aiming towards. The, the thing I loved about it, there was just so much to do. I mean, I, I, when I first played that, first time round, I played, and I still pop it on now and again, I got so distracted by all the other stuff, but not in a bad way. I mean, it's just a way that, like, oh, I haven't even done the event I was originally driving to because I spent so long trying to beat times and do crashes and stuff like that. So, it's games have not learned. They've tried to change things up. And I think if you'd try to iterate on what Burnout Paradise done in Forza, for example, Forza Horizon, I think it would have been brilliant. But it's just too sparse. Yeah, you go to the other end of the sound with Gran Turismo where it's just, it's not sparse enough. It's like there's more content in those menus to get through than there is to drive to something in Forza Horizon. Yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, you you know you're right. Underlying, you have to have a great system for accessing stuff. You know, just in everything, and it, it's definitely not been done in Gran Turismo. Um, but yeah, I'm quite. It's for, it's it's what they have twenty five. 26 years old yeah it's gotta be that as a series and they've still not improved the navigational systems well <laughs> i think they have i mean, you know i think originally they were just ridiculously obtuse it's not quite as bad as that now but it's it's still not great <laughs> you still have to do a license i can't remember in gran turismo no you still have to it's like, just optional you can no. do challenges uh -huh. um, but it's optional yeah. uh -huh. i did like a game where it went no 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 You've got to complete this before you can play the game. <laughs> There's two games that have done that well. One was Gran Turismo, where you had to pass a driving test. Brilliant. I'm sorry. Don't care what you say. Brilliant. And you only got access to later races or later events if you passed a higher level of that driving test. I'm sorry. That's brilliant. <laughs> it's gatekeeping in the best way. And the other one was Driver that just went, nah. You're not playing our game if you can't do this this underground garage. Uh, you've come out. You, yeah, I could. I've done it. You've easy. come out with two easy. things this week that I would never have said in a million years that you would ever have said. One is that you you like the gatekeeping around a game, not just one game but two. <laughs> and secondly, that you like an open world game <laughs> in the form of Burnout Paradise. I never thought you oh, would I love say Burnout that Paradise. you would like a, a, an open world game of any type. But there you go. No, right, okay, Burnout Paradise is an ADHD person's paradise. That's essentially, it's because you can, the distractions are brilliant, yet you can, but when you but you can laser focus on a particular event as well when you get there. It is, I mean, it is the ADHD, the game, Burnout Paradise. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the reason I like the gatekeeping in Gran Turismo is it, the real driving simulator. Remember when it was called that? I do. And... To do real driving, you need to pass a test. Simple as that as well. So the fact they had that in the game, I just really liked the idea of it. I mean, it wasn't a hard test to complete. It was just, I just loved that you had to do it to get anywhere in the game. And I say, the reason I, I like the one in Driver is because it was easy. I really don't get why people complain about it. <laughs> Fair enough. I've even gone back and done it. I thought, oh, maybe I just got lucky first time round. No, it's easy. I love sh crap at games. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've all got our weird quirks, and that's clearly one of yours. <laughs> yeah. We just found out that Brad likes gatekeeping and open world games. He's been lying to us all these yeah, years. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to tell me you hate indies next, and that'll be it. Uh, no, I was wondering if I've played an indie game that I was going to complain about recently. Mecha I was going to say Mecha Jammer. Yeah, you weren't a big fan. I mean, that wasn't really a... Like, 
a stick in the boot in though was it that was no. kind of just a uh, <laughs> yeah average yeah yeah you, you put it in front of me i'll eat it but i don't think i'll have it again fair play um, <laughs> however let's go then we'll, we'll keep on the driving theme actually i was going to say however a game that i will go to again and again will save this one will be a quick one because it kind of follows on from what we've just been talking about. But another game I've been playing is called Gravity Chase. And what you've kind of got here is it's a inspired by Wipeout, Roll Cage, F-Zero. And it takes elements from all of those to create something that I think is fairly unique in, in what it's trying to do. So it's due out in January according to uh, the Steam page. And basically, you do like anti-grav racing, but you've got, you could go up on the walls, the ceiling, you've got some that are in tunnels, you could do all that, some that are sort of like on external tubes, um, cylinders, and you could drive all the way around, like upside, like down on all of that, all of that. And it works really, really well. It's fast, it's the music's fun, um, I just had a really good time with it. It's not as good as Wipeout, not as good as Roll Cage, not as good as F-Zero. It's not as good as uh, Pacer, was that one of the recent ones, or BNG? It's not as yeah. good as any of those, but it's good. And I'm glad I got to play it. What I really want to put, really? I'll turn it to Jonathan Ross. What I really want to uh, talk about, though, with this, is it's got split screen, four-player split screen. And... Yeah, it's it, it reminds me, it feels almost like it's an N64 game, modern, and it's just like, it just works really, really well. It's 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 crazy, insanely fast, lots of bright neon colours on dark backgrounds so I can play it. Um, that's their natural design choice, and it works for me, so I'm not even going to complain about accessibility. But, yeah, you know, you've got your, like, normal arcade type stuff, there's, like, for just pure racing, it's got combats stuff so like as you wipe out where you get your weapons and, and bits like that as well and like uh elimination modes are in there as well and i really like an elimination mode in a racing game i think it works really well it adds something plus when you lose you can just dip out yeah <laughs> but yeah it just works really really well it's a nice variety to the the, the uh what are they called they're not vehicles are they what would you call them well they are vehicles yeah, yeah they're not ships, cars but they are ships. vehicles they call them ships don't they with stuff like that i can't I think that's what they call them in wipeout but yeah it's you know, the tracks are varied enough as well. They're bright, I say colourful. I've just had a really good time with it. But it's not as good as the stuff that influences it. But I'm okay with that when it takes bits from all of them and produces something competent. Yeah, it looks like uh, it very much like um, F-Zero GX, you know? Um, yes. Yeah, I mean, it looks interesting, but there are a lot of... There are a lot of those kind of wipeout slash F Zero inflected there are games, now, yeah. yeah, and yeah, not many of them. Are yeah, good. I've just picked out uh, Red Out in Hearts because they had the entire bundle for about two pound on Fanatical. Yeah, it's like yeah, okay. I know you've got it I, I, I'm, I'm on there as well. I was like, oh, no, but for two quid, I've got to have that with all the DLC because that's not a bad. Okay, it's not a bad game, and I think the likelihood of us getting another wipeout anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely not. And oh, it's such a shame because it needs a developer who's really, really good at track design. Because, you know, Formula Fusion, which became Pacer, you know, I battled that on Kickstarter. I was really excited because it was former Wipeout developers. But I don't know who was on it, but they weren't the ones who made the good tracks because it really doesn't have good tracks. <laughs> And also, it's a really good game with poor tracks. Yeah, no, it's got a decent enough feel to it. Uh, yeah. Not amazing, but good, solid. But yeah, the track design is just boring as hell. And yeah, it's yeah. just, it, that's a waste. And I, most recently, which I talked about on the podcast a while ago, was uh, Red Out that I played in VR. And that's really, you know, good, <laughs> solid. Yeah, simple. And it, it, it succeeds. It's getting a sequel. It's getting a new right. one. Right. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I mean, you know, within the last couple of years, I, I played Wipeout Amiga on on PSVR and I just blows them all away so badly. It takes yeah. them to the cleaners. Yeah. When I had my PSVR and I got to play the uh, Wipeout collection on that, I was just like, that was, this is what VR's for. Yeah. That, this is, just, you could, this if you put this in an arcade, with a VR headset and it was a Wipeout arcade, 
you just need people to come in with stacks of pound coins or just have a credit card system for them to do it on because you just, yeah, just make your arcade just full of those because it would be perfect. Yeah, it would. And it's, there's there's so much potential. There's so much potential because I, there was stuff that I could not do on a flat screen that I could do when I could look into the corners in VR. Yeah. It just, it works with, with Wipeout and that type of game so well and you could you could build that into the game like you like you know like you can with fight simulator not fight simulators but stuff like ace combat you know when you're playing that in vr being able to look around your cockpit and it not take the camera away from the front view at the same time yeah. you know you can use your peripheral vision to see still see out the front and you can all right show up. <laughs> sorry <laughs> but yeah um yeah so um yeah, it's got so much potential, but it's not getting realised, which is a shame. But, you know, each yeah, one of these things is, is still welcome. Yeah, Gravity Chase, though, yeah, it's, it's definitely worth a try. Unfortunately, I don't know how much it is. I've got a review code. doesn't have a price on the Steam page yet. If this is around the 10 to £15 pound mark, sweet spot. That's what I will say. Anything above that, I'd be wait for a sale. Yeah, I would hope as well, if it's quite good... And if the community take to it, I would hope that it gets a, a VR mod um, because, you know, that could really, really help with it. And like, yeah, with Risk of Rain 2, but more importantly, the Resident Evil engine getting, you know, VR yeah. modded by the community, it just, uh, it's just amazing. And it it doesn't look like it's doing anything graphically that you couldn't, you know, then replicate in, in VR. So, yeah. And- I just to point out for anyone who wants anything, it's by the team we've done Formula Retro Racing, which had a mixed reception, I think. Yeah, yeah, well, I reviewed that for the site. But it was yeah. a good, competent game. Again, I suppose it almost fits. Formula Retro Racing was a good, competent homage to, I want to say it was Virtual It was, racing. yeah. Uh, it was Virtual Racing, yeah. Because I know there's a Daytona based one as well. But yeah, these were the Virtual Racing one. And it was a competent one, but not as good as what Virtual Racing was back in the day. But it was competent. And yeah. this, I think this is what this is it's a competent alternative to about four different other games within the genre. Cool. Yeah, no, well, uh, as soon as that gets a full release, which can't be long now because we're nearly out of January, um, yes. then yeah, I'll, I'll have a look and might pick it up. Yeah, as long as it's in within that price bracket. Yeah, no don't, more. Honestly, don't go over 15 quid for this. Fair play. Have you got any more, or can I, or shall I move straight on to the big one for the I week? I will do a very, very brief thing. I was also yeah. playing, in testing my new Mega Drive, new and in inverted commas. I was testing Street Fighter 2 Plus, it's called, but, you know, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, basically, on the Mega Drive. Uh, it's really not that bad, and it was only really so that I could say, uh, I've got a converter so that I can use joysticks are on it now uh, and and yeah modern really good joysticks on the mega drive and it just throws up how many games from its back catalog benefit from going back to them with a proper joystick and playing them properly because yeah. there's so many games that i've been like oh god that's too hard and thinking back it'll be that's just because i was using the pad and the pad it you yeah. know it's all right, but it's not great. <laughs> so yeah, it was nice to go back and play it and complete it with you know, a proper joystick and it feel like a, a proper Street Fighter game. Yeah, I've played um, a couple of Mega Drive games using the arcade stick, like my converted Pandora box. And yeah, that's fun. Yes, it is. Really, really yeah. is. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's a, it, it definitely improves certain games. And I'm surprised the 16-bit consoles didn't come mainly with a, a an arcade stick over a joypad. Really, I'm surprised with where you consider the sort of titles that were on them. Yeah, there, well, there is a bit of a history behind that, but I'll save that for our retro talk. <laughs> oh, okay, I look forward to that. Cool. So, moving on, final one I've been playing, and this is easily my game of the week. Uh, we need a jingle for that. We don't, but you could do one if you want. I don't know. It's <laughs> game of the week. Brad's game of the week is called Paparazzi. Ooh. Now, anyone who's into the indie scene at all knows this has been fairly eagerly awaited. It's been shown many times on the Wholesome Games Directs and things like that. It's by developed by Sunday Month and um, it's published by Kit Fox Games, who have got a decent record of 
of games they've published, um, like but they've done Boyfriend Dungeon, Moon Hunters, Lucifer with us, which was absolutely fantastic. So they've got a decent reputation of bringing out some really decent indie games. Now, Paparazzi is pretty much a does what it says on the tin type game. There's dogs on an island. You get a camera, you take photo of the dogs. And it's kind of got a low poly aesthetic to it. But like a pastel shaded. Is that is that a term? Pastel shaded? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it's got that. <laughs> and the idea is you get given these objectives to do. So someone might go, oh, you've got to take a photo of this dog by a lighthouse. Or can you get a picture of a dog that's being friendly and, and stuff like that? And the objectives get a bit more, uh, not over the top, but a bit more, we want this specific photo, or, you know. And you basically go around, you take your photo, you get different filters, you start upgrading different lenses and all things like that. But it doesn't go overly complicated on what the camera controls are. You go around, you take the photos and you get rewarded for taking the photos to get like, they're like bones. You use those bones to buy the upgrades. But you can also upload your photos to an internal like um social media type sites or PubNet or something like that is called uh, you upload it and then people will go oh this is really good and they'll give you like extra bonus points and they'll follow you and you have to gain followers by taking by taking all the photos and it's got a really cool thing i done it i didn't realize you had that you could do that to start with so i had about like 30 photos that i'd taken that i hadn't uploaded to the like up to the pup net thing yet so i they uploaded them all in the first few they're like oh these are really good got all the little bonuses and then i started getting negatives because people started going oh it's spamming me now <laughs> i was like i really like that that's cool uh, i mean oh okay so i was like yeah it's just good little it wasn't major punishment it's like oh you get you, know, you get like zero bonus on this one or you only get two instead of like you might might have got three before um, so it's a really little cool mechanic but it's just such a nice relaxing game you know there's there's one moment where i i managed to get a picture of a, a, a dog on a on a boat it was just like just really cool um it's just like it managed to get an angle where it looked like the the dog was driving the boat it wasn't it was just stood there and it's just it's just such a lovely relaxing game yeah. Um, it's not overly long either you know you kind of opens up to a couple of different levels but i oh, just i'm having so much fun with it just snapping dogs i'm not even a big dog fan but i i i absolutely love the dogs in this probably because i haven't got to clear up after that'll, it that'll yeah be. absolutely <laughs> wonderful yeah <clears throat> it's got a superior pun title as well paparazzi That's yeah. superb yeah yeah now that looks really cool I, it releases today by the look of it yes the embargo was up today because i had to check before whether i could speak about it or not um or whether we'd get the uh, podcast published in time so yeah the embargo's up as of recording and it's also got as well what i really like is um i, I suppose this is what i would want pokemon snap to be okay so when they redid the pokemon snap for the switch it still felt fairly restrictive yeah on, well, this is what pokemon snap should have been I mean, because you've got this whole fitness album as well, where you like you have to collect the dogs like by taking their photos, and I've got a few. There's loads I haven't got, and I've been putting a bit of time into this. Yeah, and it, yeah, it looks beautiful. So, during the day, it looks wonderful, but um, you kind of get sunset as well, and oh, oh, it does. It looks beautiful. This game, yeah, absolutely. Honestly, I absolutely. Yeah, this is fantastic absolutely fantastic cool yeah it looks like oh it might not be but it looks like it's being done in the unity engine which handles like colors i think really really well but, you know i don't know why but it just does <laughs> i i have so little knowledge of of engines as to what's used for what so i couldn't tell Fair you. play but yeah no that looks really good yeah yeah and if you go to their um steam page as well because i went to look if i could find a price for it uh, I still haven't that hasn't got a price either yet. Uh, pay whatever this costs. Uh, unlike the previous title I spoke about, pay whatever this costs. It's worth it. But there's puns everywhere on, on their description for it. They've really lent into it, nice. and it works. And it's there's no voice acting or anything like that in the game, so it's, it's, it's that's why it's so calm. You're not getting taken out of it by bad voice acting or or anything like that. Just doesn't need it. It's just uh, it's just fun it's just a lovely game nice that i mean it's the only reason i would say it's a game is because you get these little objectives to do 
Otherwise, it's not a game. It's just a take, well, taking photos of like low poly, pastel shaded dogs, which is fine. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's just what you want sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, absolutely brilliant. Game of the week, easily. And probably the first one on my list for my game of the year for 2022. Oh, cheeky. But does it qualify, though? Does it meet all the strict criteria to get in? That's the question. I don't, uh, I don't know how many people work for uh, the developers. Oh, dear. Uh, is it sun, sun, Sunday month? It's, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That looks uh, like it, yeah. Yeah, no, no, they should be fine. Oh, they done Dead Quest as well, which was an interesting under-the-radar game. So, yeah, no, definitely check them out. Check them out. Sweet. Yeah, brilliant game. Now, this is where my ADHD kicks in. We, me and Stu, discussed what we was going to talk about at the end as a briefing, and I've completely forgot what that was. Ads in video games. What was it? Ads in video games. Ads? Ads in video games. Yeah, YouTube. Oh, YouTube. That was it. Advert, yeah, I'd forgotten as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's probably my fault because stream of you're, you're, you're sitting there going, I've got to try and edit this. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's understandable you forget him. But, yeah, YouTube. We're back on YouTube. Um, Might as well do a quick plug before we do anything else. We're back on YouTube. We are going to start taking segments from the podcast so whether it's a discussion on something to do with the mental health side of thing or you know the the industry as a whole or whether it's to do with a specific game uh, we're going to take a segment from the podcast each week at least one maybe two depending on how it goes and pop that up on youtube so as of right now you can go over to our youtube channel and you'll see us out uh, you'll be able to watch our chat about Chicory, A Colourful Tale, which is an absolutely beautiful game. Um, not Game of the Year 2022, because it came out in 2021. So just just, just for <laughs> okay, uh, a housekeeping there. But yeah, one of the things that's um, looked at was going like, I get the option, like, do you want to um, look into uh, monetizing videos? Oh, I don't want to monetize my videos because adverts in YouTube videos are... Uh, the worst bit of context they're not the worst when you only have one type of advert okay now i'm okay have an advert at the start and an advert in the middle i get that you've got to make your money if this is your main source of income but what i have issue is is when you get an advert at the start then you see that little pop-up in the corner that says this video includes a paid promotion so you know at some point they're going to stop the video themselves and talk about something and then just before or just after that, you also get an in-video YouTube ad as well. So you're trying to watch a 10-minute video and you've got three ads to deal with. Watch one that's an hour or so long, you've got to deal with ads big time. And it is the worst. It really takes you out of what you're trying to do. And the reason I bring it up, and I'll let Stu talk in a sec as well, is... I like YouTube. My ADHD means I, can, I like being able to choose something really short and then watch that. Or, you know, I could segment something that's longer and watch it over a few days quite easily. Um, or sometimes I can just binge an entire, like, one hour to two hour documentary on YouTube. I like that, but I don't want to be bombarded with ads in the way that I've got no issue with ads. And I know you can pay to remove them. But I've got no issue with ads because they've got to, the content creators have got to make their money, but they have got to consider how they do their ads. Because it could be, when you're looking at YouTube as an escape as well sometimes, it could be depressing when you're then bombarded with, look at this stuff you can't afford, or look at this stuff that makes people better than you, and, and whatever. It's annoying as hell. Is that just me? Or am no. I? No, 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 not at all, not at all. We all understand that adverts are needed yeah. because you can't be a professional person and put stuff up on YouTube and not monetize it in some way because you've got to earn, you know? So that's cool. I've got no no trouble with that. What I do have problems with are YouTube throwing a ton of adverts in there so that they can make money. Yeah. So when you watch a, a, a video of, oh, hang on, just one second. Wait, wait a second. Just why he's gone. Buy Raycon. Check out this VPN. 
Uh, Raid Shadow Legends. Now back to our regular (laughs) scheduled programming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you've um, got this idea, you edit that out or keep that in. Yeah, I think I'll leave that in. But um, yeah, no, I, I don't mind. Yeah, so the YouTube thing of we'll chuck our adverts in, you know, that's obviously completely gipping and it shouldn't be there at all um, because they don't need the money. Yeah. You know, they they make money anyway. It's just greed. Uh, I don't mind creators themselves being sponsored. Yeah. So, you know, I follow, as you... <laughs> As will be of no surprise to anybody, I follow a load of retro uh, computing channels because they do lots of repairs, which yep. is what I like doing. And they very often get sponsored by PCBWay. And they talk about PCBWay, which is, and now I'm going to be advertising them <laughs> <laughs> because I have to to describe what they are. So they manufacture PCBs for you. And that's great for retro stuff where, you know, you need to add components yep. that are no longer available and all that, blah, 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 blah. When they advertise them, they genuinely use them. Yeah. Like, you know, and they're kind of like, and you can use them for these same sorts of projects. And it doesn't matter what it is. If it's like, you know, somebody who builds houses saying, buy this particular lumber or, you know, buy a Black & Decker. I honestly don't mind any of that. Yeah. You know, because they need the money and it's a, it's a you know, it's simpatico. It's a, it's a good merging of form and, you know, sponsor so yep. that's fine but yeah all the kind of adverts that you get like on telly in between programs i hate that on youtube it shouldn't be there no it's, 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 but you're, you're right with the sponsorship stuff as well so but choose your sponsors carefully it's uh one that always gets me is like what what culture um who claim to be like massive gamers and, and things like that but then they go, break out and go, oh, Raid Shadow Legends, it's amazing. It's not, you know it's not. You know it's a free-to-play microtransaction, well-baited piece of shit. Yet, you're still advertising it. Have some respect for yourself. Yeah. Have some respect for your channel. You want me to believe that you're big into video games. You want me to believe that you, you, know, you know what you're talking about. Don't allow Raid Shadow Legends and the likes to be your sponsor. And also, the others that go with, with like, sponsor things that don't make sense. Giant Bomb, I don't get that does this as well. It's one of the things I don't like about the Giant Bomb podcast is talking about toilet installations or or sort of, like, sh- like nutritional pills and stuff like that. It's like, really? I d- do... For Giant Bomb? Really? Yeah. So... Pick what you've got to do. I'm okay. Linus Tech Tips, I think, just about walks that line just about right. They advertise stuff that's to do with computers, so graphics cards or monitoring systems and stuff like that, plus their own stuff, their own merch that they sell. I'm okay with that. But they walk a very fine line because a lot of it goes, are you using some of this? Are you really? But it still makes sense within the context of the video. Yeah. But it's there. And it's just going, you want me to like your stuff. You want me to trust you. Stop shilling for stuff you don't use or you know is crap. Yeah, I think it's um a little bit different. Yeah, it's different again with podcasting. I think, you know, I-, I listen to quite a few of them and there's very few that get sponsored by anything like what you, what your audience would be interested in. Like, it's constantly stuff like, you know, uh, food, you know, food, pre-prepared meals delivered to your door or you know underwear or you know it's always stuff that it's just like you know I'm a grown man I know I've got all these things I do all these things already you know if you're going to advertise something to me it should be you know new and exciting it should be tech based if I'm listening to a tech podcast yeah. if I'm listening to a knitting podcast it should be about you know carbon <laughs> fiber shadow legends take a break from knitting <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and that's what you get <laughs> yeah. but yeah no it should be like you know carbon fiber knitting needles but you know it's just yeah totally out of place and it throws you right out i think the what culture thing is interesting because you know we watch though when we've got like 10 minutes to kill between yeah doing one thing and another like you know we've just finished eating and we're going out in who doesn't minutes, like so. a list video either it's... exactly list videos are amazing but we don't I don't get this raid shadow legend stuff because uh, we're YouTube Premium using the dodgy India hack thing. Yes. So they, it strips those out, and I think you can tell what's 
particularly dodgy with adverts shilling stuff from companies if they're gone when you're on premium because they are the absolute worst they're the dregs if you know the regular adverts horrible yeah i've got one starting to pop up because i've got three different youtube accounts not they all under my main account but i've got the one for mental health gaming obviously for uploading now i've got one that's for me um as a separate one which i used to use for just uploading video stuff when i was going to try and do my own personal gaming channel and i watch stuff and then i've got my regular one which i let my daughter watch whatever she wants on there so I don't get bombarded with recommendations for kids playing with dolls and stuff like that. Yeah. I've been getting one anyway. I don't know what I've been watching to get this particular ad, but I've got one there where I've got, do you know these um, self-help gurus? Sadly, yes. Um, they do like, usually, it's basically it's multi-level marketing. It's got to be. I don't ever watch enough of the video to see, but it's got to be multi-level marketing. Yeah. But I've been getting these ones like this guy, he goes, hey, have you been busy scrolling through YouTube wondering how you can help yourself in your business? I'm like, no. What the f*** are you talking about? He's like this 50-year-old guy. He's walking on the beach and he's hey, I'm going to talk like this and I'm going to help you. I'm like, what have I watched on my mental health gaming channel to get that? <laughs> yeah. Are those like targeted ads? But I'd like to know. I mean, I get why I get Raycon and why I get Raid Shadow Legends and stuff like that because I watch a lot of video game based stuff. And because I watch a fair bit of what culture, I get it. I get why that pops up. But why am I getting this guy telling me about self help? Very strange. So I'm going to spend, I'm going to do the India trick and get rid of ads. I think it's the, it's the best idea. <laughs> yeah. It's grim. Yeah. And it's so cheap. And, you know, anything that where you're sticking it to the man. Like you're te- technically following the rules, but you're also kind of breaking them. That's that's good. Yeah, that's that's, that's good. the good one. It's uh, yeah. You don't know I wasn't in India at the time. Exactly. You could literally have been in visiting yeah. India. And, and then just went, oh, I'm done with these ads. I'll get it now. That's cheap. That's not my fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's <laughs> um, but yeah, weird. All bad. Don't like them. Don't like. I've got really got off ads. I used to love ads. The only way I could tolerate adverts is to make up stories in my head. Oh, yeah. God, they're, they're so bad. <laughs> I wouldn't praise Netflix to the rafters, but that's the one thing that you've got to love is that there's no advertisements in it at all. Yeah. So yeah. I'm happy to pay. I'm happy to pay, but not as much as... I mean, that YouTube premium, I think it's 15 quid a month in the UK. Yeah, it's crazy. Just to turn off ad, behave. I know there's other stuff, but no one wants the other stuff. No one cares about that. Tiered payments, I think, is a a, a good thing, you know, based on what what, what it is you want to get. Allow people to customise it, because you might get some people to go, look, I don't mind ads. If you want to put ads in, I get it, but I want to pay for the YouTube original stuff. So have a tier where you can do that. Customise it. I get why you couldn't do customisation back in the day. Technology wasn't there, but it's there now. Yeah. To go, this is what I want. Let me have this. How much is it going to cost? Yeah. So I'm going to shut up now. So, yeah, we'll uh, we'll leave it there. As Brad mentioned earlier on, we're putting more content back up on YouTube. Tune in for that. Other than that, obviously go to the website, join the Discord, engage with us in every way that you want and that you can. And we'll see you next week. Stay safe and stay sane.